Okay, so uh, I'm going to argue uh, really from contemporary trial data as opposed to data from 15, 16 years ago that adjuvant uh, radiation therapy in uh, gastric cancer adds no clear benefit. So we do know uh, now that uh, adjuvant therapy does improve overall survival in gastric cancer. And there are actually now three uh, acknowledged approaches that we can use to improve outcome, and these are actually all endorsed by uh, NCCN guidelines. So the original positive study was the McDonald trial. It was published back in 2001. Postoperative radiation and chemotherapy in the U.S., 5-FU leucovorin radiation on intergroup trial 116, did translate into a 10 percent improvement in overall survival, and this became adopted as a standard of care uh, shortly after it was published. The problem, however, is the quality of surgery on this trial. The vast majority of patients had less than a D1, D2 resection, and that was the criticism of this trial from, from the outset. So the next advance came in the mid-2000s from uh, the UK uh, with publication of the MAGIC trial, looking at pre- and post-operative chemotherapy without radiation. Uh, with ECF, and this translated into a similar survival benefit, 13 percent at five years without radiation therapy. And as we'll see, the quality of the surgery in this trial was actually better than the McDonald trial. And then lastly, uh, trials of adjuvant chemotherapy alone, I mean, for you know, many decades this had been a failed approach in the West, uh, and I think largely due to poor surgical quality. But uh, it's kind of hard to argue with two trials treating 2,000 patients in which everybody had a D2 resection and none got radiation. And the first positive study was for S1, uh, which is essentially uh, uh, oral 5-FU for a year. Uh, and this was the ACT-SGC study, 10% uh, improvement in five-year overall survival. It's been updated. Uh, so then some criticized and said, well, S1, that's a magic pill that only works in Japan, and, and adjuvant chemotherapy doesn't work in Western patients. So then the Koreans uh, published the classic trial, another 1,000-patient uh, adjuvant trial, now using uh, a Western-compatible uh, uh, regimen of capecitabine oxaliplatin, which achieved the same survival benefits. So, so we have three approaches that uh, are now endorsed and acceptable. Uh, uh, and two give chemotherapy alone, and one gives radiation. So, but you really need to look at the quality of the surgery and the failure pattern on these studies. So the American trial of postoperative radiation uh, with five of you, 10% had a D2 resection. And actually the recommended surgery on this trial was a D2 resection, and 10% had a D2 resection. And local recurrence rates with surgery alone were nearly 30%, and they were reduced to 20% with chemoradiation. And actually, the only benefit of adjuvant treatment on this study was to reduce local recurrence. There was actually no impact on distant recurrence. So the MAGIC trial, uh, this is Dr. Cunningham's trial, perioperative ECF. So on this trial, 40% had a D2 resection, so better quality surgery. And here, the local recurrence rates with uh, surgery alone were the same as the patients that got chemoradiation on the McDonald study, and you actually did get some reduction in local recurrence even with perioperative chemotherapy. So, and then if we look at the Asian studies where everybody gets a D2 resection, uh, the S1 trial, uh, you had a 2 to 3 percent rate of local recurrence with or without chemotherapy. The classic trial uh, was 4 to 9 percent, and the ARDIS trial, which I'll talk about in a minute, where they actually gave radiation after D2 resection, there was some reduction in local recurrence, but better quality surgery, a lot lower rates of local recurrence. So does radiation add to a D2 resection? So this was addressed by uh, the Korean ARDIS study. Uh, all patients got D2 resection up front, and then the standard arm was six months of chemotherapy with capecitabine platinum with or without the uh, interdigitation of uh, radiation therapy for 40, uh, with 45 gray uh, given with uh, capecitabine. So does radiation add to D2 resection? It does not. Uh, this was a negative study, no uh, disease-free survival benefit for the addition of radiation after D2 resection, and no difference in uh, overall survival. Uh, now, if you parse out the subsets, uh, there may be a suggestion of a benefit in lymph node positive disease. There was a 4% improvement in disease-free survival uh, for the addition of radiation. 
and perhaps also for intestinal versus diffuse um, uh, tumors. So these are relatively small numbers, but uh, perhaps a subset of intestinal node positive patients may derive some benefit. And this is actually now the subject of the ARTIST-2 trial where they're focusing on node positive uh, intestinal tumors. And again, the control arm is chemotherapy uh, by itself. So, uh, and then for the skeptics that say, well, we can't believe studies from Asia, uh, now we have the critics trial. So this is um, uh, a trial of querying out the role of radiation in a Western trial. So the critics trial was a multi-center study uh, conducted in Sweden and the Netherlands. Uh, and on this trial, uh, all patients got perioperative chemotherapy and then they were randomized to get or not get postoperative radiation. So here's the schema. So uh, patients were randomized to get perioperative chemotherapy alone uh, with surgery versus chemotherapy, surgery, and then a randomization to get either continue their chemotherapy or to get postoperative uh, chemo radiation. This was a 750 uh, patient study. Uh, the chemotherapy was either uh, EOX or ECF, or, or EC, um, ECX or EOX. Uh, they required uh, at least uh, D1, D2 uh, resection, and the postoperative radiation was uh, 45 gray, uh, given with concurrent uh, capecitabine uh, and uh, cisplatin. So here's the demographic. Uh, very few GE junction tumor patients, only 17%. So the vast majority were more distal uh, gastric cancers and a mixture of intestinal and diffuse. Here's the flow of patients through the study, uh, 788 randomized. So 85% completed the preoperative chemotherapy, 94% went to surgery, and about 80 to 84% had a curative margin resection, and about two-thirds of patients went on to get their adjuvant uh, treatment. And again, chemotherapy alone, or chemotherapy and radiation. Uh, here's the resection results, uh, just to give you an idea of the quality of the surgery. So about 40% had a D2 and 50% had a D1, so certainly better than the McDonald 10% uh, uh, that had a D2 uh, resection. Uh, here's the surgical pathology, basically comparable uh, between the two uh, arms. Uh, significant rate of node negativity, uh, about 47%, uh, and about half of patients had node positive disease at the time of surgery. So, does radiation add a benefit? Dr. Crane, I defy you to argue for radiation uh, after this. Oh, maybe there's a difference here. There's no difference in survival with adding radiation on this well-controlled contemporary study, no benefit. Progression-free survival, no benefit. So, I mean, we're waiting for the subset analyses, but I'll be honest, I mean, there's no difference here. So are we gonna find a hair difference in a subset analysis? We'll have, to, we'll have to see. So what is the role of radiation in gastric cancer resection? I think the, the, the quality of the surgery dictates a need for radiation. And clearly, from the McDonald data, we have much higher rates of local recurrence of the cancer with less than a D1, D2 resection. And certainly, if you have a patient that had eight lymph nodes taken out and two were positive, then they should get 5-FU radiation. And then maybe next time, they should get their surgery at a tertiary care center where you don't have the surgeon doing one or two gastrectomies as a hobby. Uh, for gastric cancer, I think the standard of care is perioperative or postoperative chemotherapy without radiation in patients that have a D2 resection. So there are ongoing studies addressing this uh, issue. Uh, the TROG trial, uh, this is the Australian, Canadian, European study. Everybody gets preoperative. Here they're asking a preoperative radiation question. So uh, these are patients with GE junction and gastric cancer, preop chemo, with or without the addition of radiation preoperatively. And then I told you about the Korean ARTIST-2 trial, which is postoperative chemotherapy after D2 resection with or without radiation. Uh, specifically in uh, node-positive uh, patients. So I think to summarize then, uh, local recurrences are higher with less than a D2 resection, and postoperative chemoradiation on the U.S. intergroup trial Im improved outcome in these patients, but only by reducing local recurrence. No, when does an adjuvant study only work when it reduces local recurrence? Because it works when you don't do good surgery. Trials with better surgery, chemotherapy alone achieves benefit without radiation, including perioperative magic, and S1 or capecitabine oxaliplatin after D2 resection. 
Radiation in a D2 resection, no improvement in disease-free or overall survival in the ARDIS trial, and no benefit in a European contemporary trial for radiation added to perioperative chemotherapy with D1 or D2 resection. How do we move the field forward? So I mean, we can, you know, I think it's, we have to move beyond debating these, you know, 30-year-old questions. You know, should we give epirubicin? Should we give radiation? The, the benefits are 10 percent, so we're going to move 10 percent to 11 percent. So we need to move the field forward. Uh, current adjuvant therapy, we, we're really failing. I mean, we're getting a 10 percent improvement in survival. We really need to start focusing on new drug development, identifying new targets and new agents. We may have some signals from molecular profiling from the Genome Atlas data that uh, Elena showed earlier. There do appear to be four molecular subsets of gastric cancer. Uh, the receptor-associated tyrosine kinase pathway group may benefit from targeted agents like HER2. The MSI high and the EBV patients, maybe they're better candidates for immunotherapy. Maybe PDL1 expression can be a biomarker. And then imaging uh, to guide therapy. I don't really have to talk, uh, time to talk about this, but there is an ongoing trial in the United States that you can put patients on, Alliance A021302, uh, where patients with resectable gastric cancer, if they have a pet avid primary tumor, the PET scan directs the preoperative chemotherapy. So if patients respond to their preoperative treatment, they continue it. If they don't respond, they get changed to a different chemotherapy or are offered surgical salvage. So this is a trial is having difficulty accruing, but it is a PET-directed uh, study, a uh, really the only national adjuvant uh, trial that's uh, ongoing uh, in the U.S. And thanks very much.